بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We have today a very important lesson Continuing the discussion about Al-Asma, Al-Husna, Wasifat, Al-Ulya, about the most beautiful names and lofty and high exalted attributes of perfection, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes and descriptions and characteristics and traits, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have Today, a very, very important narration. A narration that is authentic. And it is with regards to the terminology of the scholars of Al Hadith, Hadithun Maqtur. What does that mean? This very important narration that is authentic. It is Hadithun Maqtur. What does that mean? What does that mean? We have learned about Hadith before. And we have seen that there is a Hadith al Marfu' and a Hadith al Maquf and a Hadith al Maqtur. What is the Hadith al marfuwa That is the narration from the statements or the actions or the affirmation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ah, this, this is not a Hadith al marfuwa This is Aha Nabil Allahumma barik from the Tabi'een from the Tabi'een or those after them. Or those after them. Hadith al-Marfu' is the narration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Hadith al-Mawquf is the narration of one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, Hadith al-Maqtu' is a narration of the Tabi'een or those after them from the Atba'a Tabi'een and so on and so forth. Radiyallahu an al jamee So we have today a very important authentic narration from Ad imam Malik. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Ad Imam Malik, he is Imam Dar al Hijrah in his time. And he was the Imam of Al Madina. And he is one of the four famous Imams that are followed until this day. Rahimahullah Jami'an. His name is Malik ibn Anas. Ad Imam Malik ibn Anas. Ad Imam Malik ibn Anas. Naam, Imam Malik. He died in the year 179. He is from the Atba' at Tabi'in. He's from the Atba' at Tabi'in. Meaning he heard from the Tabi'in and he learned from the Tabi'in. He learned from those who learned from the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was the Imam of Al Madinah in his day. And he is, the, uh, he is an Imam from the Imams of Ahl Sunnah until this day. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. This is a very important narration. One time, he was sitting in the masjid, in the Prophet's masjid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he used to teach there. And somebody came in, and somebody came in and asked a question. You know what they said? They said to him, Rahimahullah, Ar Rahmanu ala al Arsh istawa. Ar Rahman ala al Arsh istawa. That the most gracious, he rose above his throne. Now, this, is an, this is a verse in the Quran. And it's a verse speaking about one of the attributes of Allah. Azawajil, and that is the attribute of Al Istiwa. And that Allah, He rose above the throne. 
And from the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal Al Ulu, that He is Al Ali, Al A'la, that He is the Most High, Subhanahu wa Taala, and that He is above His throne, and He is not mixed inside of His creation, and His creation is not mixed inside of Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. So this man he came in and he says, Al Rahmanu Ala Al Arsh Istawa. He said, كيف استوى? So the man he came in that the the and he said that the, Allah he says Al Rahman. He rose above his throne. How did he rise above his throne? How did he rise above his throne? This is what the man he said. At this time, Al Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he lowered his head and he became very upset. And this man is saying this very strange statement. How did he rise above the throne? How did he rise above the throne? And then Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he looked up and he said some very beneficial statements that are a principle for Ahlul Sunnah with regards to understanding the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, he said, rahimahullah, al-istiwa'u ma'adum. That the rising above the throne, rising, the rising is known. The rising is known. Aristiwa ma'alun. And then he said, Wal kayfu majhul. And the how is unknown. We do not know. We cannot comprehend how. We cannot comprehend how. It's unknown to us. And he said, Rahimahullah would Iman Ubihi Wajibun. And to believe in it is an obligation. And to believe in it is an obligation. Was su'alu anhu bid'ah. And to ask. And to ask how it is is an innovation. Is an innovation. So we see here some very, very important points about how to believe in the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal from the understanding of Al-Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Istiwa, rising. It means to rise. In the Arabic language, it's known. Al-Istiwa, ay irtafa'a wa ala. It means to sa'ada, wa irtafa'a wa ala, to go up, to rise. So, Imam Malik, he mentioned that. Al-Istiwa is known. We know what Istiwa means. Istiwa means to, to rise and to go up. To rise and to go up. As for how Allah made istiwa, then this is unknown. Allah didn't under Allah didn't tell us that. And we cannot comprehend that or understand that. Because we do not know how the essence of Allah is and the life of Allah is. So therefore, how can we know how his attributes are? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we understand that? We understand the meaning of Aristiwa. He says that's well known. That means to go up. As for how Allah did that, then then that's not un we don't understand that. We don't know. Because we never seen Allah. So we don't know we don't know how he made istiwa. But we believe in it because Allah He said He made istiwa. But we believe in it because Allah He said He made istiwa. And we don't ask how, because this is an innovation. And it's an innovation because the companions and those before, they didn't ask how. They didn't ask how. So therefore, this is a very important affair. And this is how we believe in all of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Imam Malik is clarifying the issue of one attribute, Al-Istiwa. Allah, He rose above the throne. What does it mean to rise? That means to rise. It means to go up. But how Allah rose above the throne we do not know we do not know the, the how we do not know because he did not tell us and we have not seen him subhanahu wa ta'ala we do not know about how his life is and how his essence is subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore we do not know how his attributes are and we don't know how he rose but we believe in it because allah he said that he rose above the throne so therefore we believe in it we know rising means rising, and uh, Allah, He said that He rose, so therefore we believe in that. As for how that happened, we do not know. 
We do not know. And we do not ask about the how, because asking about how it is, is an innovation. Is an innovation. At Imam Malik, he, he, he said, Aristiwa'u ma'alum. Wal kayfu majhul. Wal imanu bihi wajibun. Was su'alu anhu, yani an al kayf, bid'ah. Innovation. Is an innovation. And then he told the man, you have to get out of here. <laughs> you have to get, you can't ask these bad things. This is innovation. This is not nice in a good way. Because the companions, they didn't say how. Allah, Allah, he mentioned many attributes about himself in his book. And likewise, his prophet mentioned many attributes about him. And the companions, they never said how. They never said how. Because they understand that you cannot comprehend how these attributes are because Allah he didn't tell us. So rising above the throne to rise, we know what that means. How Allah rose, we don't know how Allah rose. That's from his attributes specific to him. He rose in a manner befitting his majesty and to believe in this attribute is an obligation because Allah he mentioned that and to ask about how this is an innovation. So from here, we can uh, apply this in every single attribute. Allah, He says that He can hear all things and see all things. That He is as samiru al-basir. So Allah, He has hearing and seeing. So do we know what hearing and seeing means? Yes, we know what hearing and seeing means. But how Allah hears and sees, do we know that? No, we don't know that. He didn't tell us that part, how He sees and hears. But He told us that He sees and hears, so we believe in it. We believe in it. And we don't ask how. And we don't ask how. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said He has a face. Do we know what face means? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said He has hands. Do we know what hands mean? Yes, we know what hands mean. But do we know how Allah's face and hands are? No, we don't know how because He didn't tell us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He didn't tell us. And to believe that He has a face and to believe that He has hands is wajib. It's an obligation. Because this is what He said about Himself Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And to ask how is an innovation. And it's not good and it's not the right way. So every attribute of Allah Azza wa Jalla, this is the case. We know what the, the words mean in the Arabic language. We know what they mean and we believe in them. But as for how they are with regards to Allah, we don't know that part. But whatever we do for sure, we do not distort the meaning and change it to mean something else. And we do not deny it and say that it, he doesn't have it. And we do not also uh, ask how, like we see here in this narration. And we do not resemble it to the creation whatsoever. Rather, Allah, he has all of these attributes in a manner befitting his majesty. In a manner befitting his majesty. And this is that beautiful principle also that the people of knowledge, they mention from the scholars of hadith, from the very first and best generations, Imrar al-Sifati, kama ja'at bila kayf. And they would say about the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal whenever they came and whenever they're mentioned, whenever they came in the Quran and whenever they're mentioned, they would say, Amir ruha kama ja'at bila kayf. That you believe in them just as they come and you don't ask how. And that statement is clarified in this narration from Imam Malik rahimahullahu ta'ala. That you, you uh, believe in them as they came and you don't ask how. Meaning Allah, He rose above the throne. Yes, He rose above the throne. And uh, we know what rising means. And, oh, yes, we know what rising means. And we know that Allah, He did that. Yes, we believe in that. As for how, we don't know. We don't know. Because Allah didn't tell us. And we do not ask how. We do not ask how. So the human being, his eyes and ears, they, the eyes and ears, they have a limit. And likewise, the mind. The eyes and the ears, they have a limit. Likewise, the mind. Like your, sight, your eyesight, can you see uh, all, the way, uh, all the way to Canada? 
Can you see all the way to the masjid from here? Uh, no, you can't see all the way. Can you see all? You can't even see all the way to the backyard. There's walls there, right? Your eyesight is limited. Your eyesight, even if you got out into the open street, you can see all the way down so far, and then your eyesight stops. It doesn't keep on going. Your eyesight has a limit. You can only see so far. Everybody's eyesight is like this. They can only see so far. They can only see so far. Likewise, hearing. Your hearing, uh, the ability to hear only goes so far. Your ability to hear only goes so far. You can't hear everything. And likewise, you can only hear so far. So people are talking a little bit further than you can hear, and you don't hear them. Because your hearing doesn't reach where they are. And likewise, the intellect and the mind, it has a limit. You can only reach so far. You cannot, you cannot uncomprehend everything. The mind, it has a limit. So therefore, we stop at the limits. We stop at the limits in trying to understand the, the, the names and attributes of Allah. We can't understand how they are because He didn't tell us how they are. So we stop at the limits. And the limits is that we know and we affirm what He affirmed in His book. And we believe in that just as He has affirmed it. And we know what the words mean and we understand them. And the meanings of those words, but as for how they are with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not know and we cannot comprehend that because He did not tell us. We have never seen Him. But if we believe in Him and we obey Him and we follow His path, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will see Him in the hereafter. And this is the greatest of our rewards that we hope for. And this is why we learn about Him. And even in this life, of course you can't see him with your eyes, but the more you learn about him, you can see him with your heart. Meaning you have knowledge of him, and you will know him by his names and attributes, and you'll know him by his power and his strength, and know him by his mercy and his kindness, and you'll know him by his help and his aid, and you'll know him by his beauty and his mercy. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is from knowing Allah Azza wa Jal. The heart will know Him and love Him and worship Him. And this is why we're learning about Him because we love Him, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, and we want to know Him and obey Him and uh, we believe in Him and we ask Him to guide us and to make our hearts firm and to fill our hearts with the love of Allah and the knowledge of Allah and the knowledge of His Tawheed and to give us a good and a proper understanding of his names and attributes and to make that knowledge beneficial for us. And uh, a reminder that there is no class next week. And uh, next weekend there is a dawrah, a seminar insha'Allah in Masjid at Tawheed. And we encourage all of you to participate and to join us and to come to the Masjid if you can for the classes or at least to listen online هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم